my, my friend Michael Holbert, he's one of the wrestling coaches at my gym. And the first time I grappled with him, we're wrestling. Yeah. And I grab his, grab his wrist, we're clinching up, trying to get an arm drag. And he does the exact same movement of a low block, like a karate low block. What? And strips my grip on him. Yeah. And, and I grab him in, he just strips it off again. And, and I'm like, whoa, time out, time out. Yeah. What are you doing there? And he's like, you know, just just stripping the grip, you know, and he's pulling one hand back to his hip yeah. as he like violently strikes the hand off. I'm like, that's right. that's karate. That's that's taekwondo. That's the low block. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. the, the what now? That's <laughs> wrestling. And and I had this this huge epiphany, this light bulb moment like, whoa, there's there's a lot of grappling in those forms that nobody seems to realize is grappling. Exactly. Or at least their applications of those movements that are grappling. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was always taught in like karate classes and the Shotokan class, the low block, I don't know if somebody's throwing a kick at you or something. Right. And conceivably, I guess you could do that, like push yeah. it out of the way with your forearm. But hopefully not. You know, that was the most efficient. Yeah, that was the most efficient use of that movement I'd, have, yeah. I've, I'd ever seen. Yeah. And the fact that he pulled the hand back to the hip yeah. to generate counter pressure to clear the grip. Yeah. Suddenly made perfect sense. Like, oh, that's why you do it. Yeah. That's why you pull the hand to the hip. Yeah. It's not because you're leaving your face exposed. It's because of the context. Exactly. Context is for kings, man. Context, context is king. <laughs> that's what I always tell my students because the thing is, if karate is supposed to be about self-defense, then you got to understand that it happens at a close distance. If I'm standing over here ready to block your kick, and that's consensual fighting. That's like a street fight. That means I have the ability to run away. But in a real self-defense situation, when somebody's grabbing you, you don't have any option. You just got to defend yourself. And that's when you do something that might look like one of those karate blocks, which, of course, is not a block at all. It's a grappling technique. And 95% of self-defense yeah. happens at that close quarter combat distance. But what happened was as karate got modernized, and it spread to mainland Japan from China and Okinawa, then they wanted to make it fit into the mold of the other modern Japanese martial arts. And they all happen at that distance where you use a sword. That's what the Japanese are used to. So they tried to fit a square peg into a round hole. And that's when you end up with these weird ways of using karate moves that might not work in reality. Oh man, that's that's a great way to put it. Squares and round yeah. holes. Yeah, I I, I got to tell you about this experience. My my first yeah. experience taking a karate class. Okay. So, yes. So my my first martial art was taekwondo, okay. and I started at age, age seventeen. I graduated high school early. I went to college, um, and they they offered a, a karate class. Okay. Now I came from a small town. There were no martial arts schools at all, like anywhere. And um, so when I went to college and found out my, my university offered a karate class, I, I was really excited. Like, wow, I've been wanting to do this since I was a kid, right? Cool. So, so I signed up for it. I showed up and it, it turned out to be a Taekwondo class. And there, I was like, <laughs> Korean okay. Korean karate. It's, it, it's almost the same thing, right? Right. So I learned Taekwondo and I spent quite a bit of time doing that. But then I found out my university also had uh, these martial arts clubs. So after a few years of training in Taekwondo, I found out there was a Shotokan Karate Club. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I want to do that. So I signed up for the Shotokan Karate Club at the same time. Yeah. Right? So I'm doing all the martial arts clubs at the, at the school because I'm super excited about it. Yeah. You know, Shotokan, Taekwondo, Capoeira, um, Kobudo, uh, okay, Jiu-Jitsu, cool. you know, all, all this stuff. Yeah. So, so I show up for the karate class and the, the teacher is this, this old guy. I shouldn't say old guy because he was actually about my age <laughs> now. Back then. He just looked old. I don't know. He just looked a lot older than he was. Okay. And it, it was strange because as soon as he found out that I, I was part of the Taekwondo club as well, oh man, it was like a wall went up and he was like, oh, you're one of them. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> we don't play with those guys basically. And he went on this tirade explaining why Shotokan was so, so much better than Taekwondo and Taekwondo sucks. And he's okay. like, I was like, oh, okay, well, um, that's, if, if you have a better method, let's, let's, let's learn it. Yeah. And what he proceeded to teach looked exactly the same as Taekwondo, like the forms, the movements, exactly the same. Yeah. I was like, what's going on here? 
They use the same movements, the same forms, the same punches, the same kicks. <laughs> right. But there's so much pride on each side. This one is better than that one. Um, so, so I got to ask you, like, uh, what, what is your main style of, of karate? Well, like, I, I, I don't know if you, you probably mentioned that a bunch of times in your channel. And, you know, this is something that a lot of people ask me, but I yeah. don't have a main style. As a karate nerd, I can't just limit myself to one style because I right. love this whole art. Oh, I love that much. answer. Yeah, because that's, that's like eating one flavor of ice cream for the rest of your life. How could you do that, right? Yes. But people get so defensive. Yes. It's like, to many people, their style is like a religion. It needs to be defended. Yes. My style is the best. Your style sucks. My God is the best. Your God is wrong, right? You know, the same thing, kind of. Yeah. So what I do is I just view karate as this mountain, right? And there are many paths that lead to the top. And to me, it doesn't matter what path you're on because we're all on that same mountain. And sometimes you can actually see the mountain better by climbing the mountain next to yours, because then you get that perspective, right? So for that reason, I've mm. done other martial arts as well, because I'm sitting right now in my family's martial arts center. So we do Muay Thai, we do MMA, we do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we do all of that. So I've been exposed to that from a very early age. And that gave me a deep sense of appreciation for how we're all connected. And just because I wear the gi and I use Japanese terms doesn't mean that I can't practice other arts or learn from someone like you as well. No, that's, that's so cool, man. I, I almost want to kick myself for asking you that question because that's one of the questions I hate about MMA. Like, well, what's your main style, man? Right. Is it like boxing or jujitsu or Muay Thai? I'm like, well, it's, it's the sport of MMA. Right? It's, you have to know all of that. You have to be proficient in all of that yeah. in order to compete. Yeah. So if you limit yourself, that, that's the dumbest thing you can possibly do, basically. Exactly. So yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself for asking that question. <laughs> well, I'm glad you but, did, uh... because it's, it's one of those questions I get a lot. And although I get tired of answering it, I, I think I can, I can never answer it too many times, because it's so important. Yeah. But man, as far as traditional martial arts goes, there, there is so much emphasis on, on lineage. If, if you wear a gi, if you wear a belt, everyone wants to know where did that belt come from? Who gave you that belt? Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's an understandable, understandable question. Not my favorite question, though. Because, again, um, I saw a clip, a video clip you put up on Instagram um, okay. yesterday or the day before, uh, talk with uh, Sensei Seth about belts. Right. And I loved yeah. your answer. I loved your answer so much to that. I was like, yes, I was cheering in my seat here in my living room when I heard that. Like, yes, I love that answer. So for anybody who didn't hear that, just could you please give us your stance on belts? Because I love that so much. Well, well, the whole thing about belts is that they're contextual. And that's what I always try to tell my students that, yeah, we might give you a yellow belt or a green belt or a blue belt. But outside of these four walls, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Because you can't compare a black belt in one school to a black belt in another school. And this is also something that people ask me a lot. What belt do you have? What, what grade are you? And I always <sighs> hesitate to answer because I know that my answer won't mean anything to you. Because the requirements for a black belt in my school is so different from your school, his school or her school, right? And so for this reason, we even wear pink belts at my Karate Nerd Experience, which is my annual seminar that I do in a new country every year. But I call it Momoiro, which means peach blossom color in Japanese because it sounds cooler than saying pink mm. belts. <laughs> <laughs> and also, whenever, sure I does, visit a, whenever I visit a new school, which, I do, which is what I do a lot, when I travel, I try to visit local schools and learn from different masters of different arts. I always wear a white belt because I'm not a black belt over there. It's not attached to my body. I can take it off and put on another belt whenever I want to channel that shoshin, the beginner's mind, as we say in Japanese. So I think that people are just too fixed and too static when it comes to their belts. They should be more dynamic. That's my whole thing. And I, I love that so much. And I love that so much, it, especially, especially in, in terms of combat sports. Like in MMA, nobody wears a belt into the ring. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you might get one if you're the best fighter in the world going out, but nobody wears the belt into the ring. Yeah. And that's, that's such a beautiful thing because it, it essentially puts everybody on the same playing field. I mean, everybody's obviously not equal as far as skill, but... Sure. But we might get a, 
tiny bit of noise here. My kids just walked in the door. Oh, no problem. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, but, but beautiful the thing philosophy. About is also that, you know, that, oh, hello. Oh, and and here, here they are. Here they are. Mm, what's and your name? Here's the other one. Oh, don't touch the microphone. Hi, I'm Jesse. This, this is Eve and this, this is Ivy. Hi. Hello, nice to meet you guys. I, I don't think they can hear you because I got the headphones oh, oh. on, but oh okay, I'll just